Hello friends, you're with Lonesome Gamer and I'm playing Empires of the Middle Ages. The turn is 800, let me see, that's 25, 30, I guess the turn is now 841. And, uh, well, we have an interesting situation, especially here in the center of Europe. There is this war going on between the coalition here, the Germans and the northern Franks, and here the Lombardians. And obviously it's looking pretty bad for the latter guys, simply fighting two uh, people is a pretty bad idea so um, he's definitely in a very bad position here and he probably will fall in the next few turns I also made a mistake at the end of the last video I did an attack from Toulouse against Anjou and I think I, I tried it actually twice and it failed twice and I forgot to reduce the social state of Toulouse, which was an effect shown on the attack cards. And that again led to the uh, discard of the tactical systems. They had to be discarded once uh, an attack leads to a, a reducement of the base area. So therefore, he has no longer this tactical advantage, which makes it even worse for him now. On the other side, we have here the Byzantines. Their empire shrinked quite a bit due to twice a leader died airless card. Um, he lost two areas here in Italy and also a few here in Asia Minor too. So uh, it will take a while until he can restore order and he has a terrible leader too. So we'll see how this develops. Well, we've seen a pretty static game here. Not too much happened. Leader trying basically to rule their areas, improve their kingdoms. The Spanish guy here. We had three times a year of famine. Once here in Asia Minor. So there's something to do. We have here three unrest sitting. Well, actually these are out of his area, but still an unrest here. An interesting point though is that the French player, he managed to grab out of this war what, what was basically his goal. He has now Toulouse and the Provence. They are in a horrible state. Uh, well, the Provence at least and Burgundy, so he's got to invest some ruling actions here, but he had the areas he wanted. So in a way he might now finish that war, which might make it then harder for the other guy, although he has a much greater income, of course. The Irish player tried ruling, but he doesn't have the money to invest anything here. So he has these horrible values, minus three, minus two, minus three. Um, and therefore his great conquest rating doesn't really help him. He has a pretty good leader, but these are all negative modifiers here, so this is very hard to uh, restore a, a decent statue here. We have a new game round, the year is 850, and something of interest happened, a magnet showed up here in Serbia, 
and he's going to attack Adrianople. So some additional problems here for the Byzantine player. I think basically the Byzantine player has the option to defend himself four times and then he probably has enough money to fight back and kill the magnet. Um, I guess that might be possible. We have a plus two here. So this guy has a five, minus two is three, minus one is two, and uh, maybe he's not even able to do it. It's a different language, so we gotta subtract another one, so he's at a negative, and, and for the religion, so that means he's at minus two or something, so he's not gonna attack here. So he's gonna try to pillage the area, but he only has an effectiveness rating of 2 after all the modifiers. So um, the Byzantine player can simply try to defend himself here by spending a buck, subtracting his combat result, and that's good enough then. Um, so let's see. Yeah, no success here from the Magnet, of course. And uh, we do the same thing again. We have to check, obviously, for leader death, but this is also not happening. The magnet also survives. Okay. So basically, I'm just going to do this now four times. The magnet's going to keep the last card for defense purposes. And therefore, we can, with our last action card, try to simply destroy him. That should be possible then. Okay, so um, the Byzantine player drew a weapons advance, which is a pretty cool card because it's basically the same uh, as the tactical systems, I think. So he has a plus three here on a combat value if he doesn't attack. And now he's got a plus two, his leader has a three. So that gives him a five. And that's a six then. He's going to attack a different language though. Uh, and a different religion, so it drops down to two. But then I got a plus three, so I'm again at five. Now I'm going to spend two bucks. And if the other guy, uh, he will defend himself. So that means I have to subtract five then, the, the combat rating of the magnet. So if I'm not mistaken, I should be at two. I'm going to throw five, let's say six more bucks in. So that brings me then to eight. Let's see what we get. Ah, uh, shit. No success here. Actually, I will lose one here. That's pretty painful, obviously. Ah, uh, shit. And that also means that we see unrest in the area. That is also pretty bad. Oh, I think I... Then auto, I think I have to roll for unrest. I'm not absolutely sure if there will be unrest. Yeah, it's actually a rebellion check that I have to do. And uh, the area is fine. So that wasn't too great. So in the next turn, the guy can continue trying to attack or to pillage me. And I probably have to defend myself again. I'm going to tax here and then just continue here. The Byzantine player has again given the Lombardian guy 10 bucks to help him sense defense, uh, to help himself defend against these guys. And the German player starts to see that this doesn't make a lot of sense anymore. I mean, he just. Now it's very likely that the French player won't continue. He has what he wanted. He wants to increase 
or improve these new uh, gained areas here. And why should he help him anymore now? Of course, we might come to a deal, say, okay, you get Lombardy, uh, the French player gets Lombardy, and I take only these two. But then in the end, you got to ask yourself, was it worth it? And even that is not... I mean, maybe we should do that. I mean, otherwise it would have been completely pointless, right? It's a tough decision. I'm really considering stopping this war. It went now on for 70 years or something, and I gained simply nothing out of it. However, the other guy managed to gain three pretty rich provinces. And maybe we come to this agreement that we say, okay, you continue, you, you attack Lombardy, and I from now on try to deal with Verona, for example. But is that so much easier? I don't know. It is really hard to say. And the Byzantine player, he's not really short of money. I mean, he he has here 25 more bucks lying around. So it seems like as long as nothing extraordinary happens, like we get a nine military leader or something like that, the continuation of the war seems maybe a little pointless. I might roll a die here and uh, see how how all the... I mean this guy is also involved in new negotiations so we see how motivated these people are. Well I think for the moment we might see a truce. Maybe not forever, I mean pretty sure not forever. The thing is simply that these players are so much bigger, so I think their, yeah, their opinion or their strategy is now to simply improve their empires, to gain money, to simply save some money for a new campaign, and then we'll see. I mean, of course, this guy can also try to rule, and these are pretty rich areas, but in the end there are only three of them. And um, he has not exactly a lot of room to expand. So I guess I'm going to try to improve my empire. So therefore, probably in the next turns, nothing too interesting will happen. The uh, leader of the Lombardians died airless, so he lost all his claims here in France, but at the end of the turn another guy died and now he ended up with a leader of the combat value of 9. Diplomacy is only 1, but combat is 9 and that might even give him now the option maybe to fight back um, Hard to tell if he wants to move against this guy or against that guy. Uh, maybe he can even make a deal with someone or so. Um, we'll see. But, but this opens now new options for him. And maybe he can survive. But of course, uh, on the long term, his options are really limited here. So at the beginning of this round here, it's uh, 855. Uh, we've seen a Viking raid. Um, that did cost Castille two um, social state uh, points and also here Normandy and uh, I think also Flanders here. Yeah. Then this magnet here tried to pillage again Adrianople but 
he died, he rolled, he, there was a card drawn with a leader check value of 5. So the guy died and is no longer a threat to the Byzantine player. This time he was lucky, he definitely needs his actions to uh, restore his, the, the size of his former empire here. And now we come to the more interesting point and that is again this conflict here. So now that we see here this new leader with a nine, that guy is actually willing to attack here in the north and uh, I'm going to check now the, the player order determination, but I think he pretty much that he's going to be... Uh, no, actually the Irish leader is the best at the moment, so he can decide who goes first. But I'm pretty... Uh, this guy can go before the other guys, and he will do so. So he will not allow the German leader taxation, and the German leader is completely out of money, so he cannot defend himself. That's bad news because all these here have zero or negative population values. So that means a single success there would be enough to take out the whole region. It is possible that actually Germany will get completely lost. Now that is not so much in the interest of the Byzantine player who wanted to prevent these two big empires here. Uh, in the center of Europe but and he thought actually about giving money now to the German player and helping him out but then the Lombardian player said look I'm really thankful that you help me with the money all the time but if you now give money also to my enemy, I'm going to march down Italy and I'm going to take your uh, two possessions here. With a nine leader, it's going to be very hard. You have a three guy here. You have to pay a lot of money to prevent that from happening. So uh, it's probably not so much in your, in your interest to help the German leader. Otherwise, I will let you control Italy. I, I, you can even have Rome, but um, don't help that guy. And that is a point that actually could convince the Byzantine player not to get involved any longer in this conflict here in Central Europe. And indeed, the Lombardian player is going to be number one, so I want to draw a card there. Let me see. That's the Holy Roman Empire. Now that might even be an interesting card for him. Play at any time in the friendly player turn. If the player leader is Catholic, and the player controls the Rome area and 10 or more Romanic and Germanic group areas, then he receives 5 additional votes when conducting a parley. Applies an additional minus 1 modifier to all rebellion checks for Germanic areas. Increase the leader's diplomacy value by plus 3. <laughs> Decrease the diplomacy value by minus 3 for diplomacy and ruling endeavors against orthodox areas. Discard a minus 1 result is attained in any diplomacy or ruling endeavor against a Catholic or orthodox, uh, orthodox area. Okay. Discard if a minus 1 result is attained in any diplomacy or ruling endeavor against Catholic or orthodox area. There is no effect for endeavors against Muslim, heretical, and pagan areas. So that is actually a card that he might be able to use. Um, Rome is not far away. He might consider getting that. And we'll see about the others here. 
So now, let's let's start that war. It's it's a very uh, simple thing. We have not too much money. We have 12 bucks. That's exactly enough to do six attacks. So uh, yeah, let's let's con let's go on here. So we have here a got a nine. Minus three is a six. Well, that evens out with that one, so I'm back at nine. Well, actually, I could do it from Verona, which is better. So, actually, I got a nine plus one is a ten. Minus three is a thirteen. And then we have to uh, subtract two for the different language. So, I'm at eleven. And that is clearly a success here. So Switzerland is now my area. I mean, that's not too valuable. But it's definitely a start. I'm going to take these for now. Can exchange that later. And we have unrest there. And then I'm going to continue from there and I'm going to attack Swabia. Um, now the situation is a little harder. Nine. Well, first we got to pay. This is probably the hardest attack simply because this is a total disaster, this area here. So I'm going to attack minus three. So I'm at 6, and I gotta uh, subtract 1 here, so I'm at 5, and 2 more for the different language, so I only have a 3 here. Um, I'm gonna try it, and well, sadly that didn't work out. Gonna give it another shot here. And again, it didn't work out. That sucks. I'll try it again. We really want to get that. Come on. Nope. No success this time. However, this time this drops down to a zero. So we have two more cards. We can try it again. And this time we made it. Wow. Okay, so Swabia has fallen. And is actually at minus one now. That was hard to take. I'm going to roll here the cathedral on a one to three. It will remain intact on a fire four to six. It will be destroyed during all the looting. And sadly, the cathedral is destroyed. This is a house rule. This is not my own thing. But anyway, uh, this, is, this is not in the rules. So then, I'm going to attack Franconia with my last two bucks. And of course we have unrest in Swabia. So, uh, yeah, with my last two bucks I'm going to attack Franconia. And shit, this sucked. So the leader dies. This drops down one space, or by one. Oh no, actually, yeah it does. It does. So we might actually say that the German leader was kind of lucky here because this guy now died. He was very lucky. And you can roll a die here. And yeah, now it drops significantly. The combat rating goes down to a 2 actually from a 9. So that was really bad luck.
administration stays at three diplomacy well that goes up from a one to a three so we have now well definitely not a, a great leader anymore and that is obviously a shame I mean it would have been cool to see maybe a little more going on here but now that the guy is dead we won't there is no treasury for him well actually he can tax and he can try to take a buck from Verona and that's all he gets one buck and now probably we're gonna see the fighting going back yeah and it seems like uh, the the German player was kind of lucky in the end if we would have taken Franconia then that would have been into unrest because there would no more there would be no more connection to the court so a taxing would be pretty risky here so he could have taken four maybe six bucks that would have mean, meant a lot of problems for him now he can tax the empire get eight bucks and that is much better than the situation before no doubt here and of course now this guy can no longer defend himself so maybe now actually it might go the other way back if that leader hadn't died well anyway maybe I was too optimistic here as the Lombardian player now it looks pretty grim so the German player managed to capture back Swabia and Switzerland but again he didn't manage to continue simply because of these horrible values here it makes an attack hard if you don't have a lot of money um, but now this guy is also out of money and I really yeah I have my doubts that he will actually give him additional money here I mean I think he's he's on his own now from now on mainly administrative things happened during the last turn I don't know if you've already seen that this was reconquered um, there was a try to plunder Verona which didn't work out he ruled a little bit here to improve uh, this area a little bit um, here taxation was pretty much a disaster he ended up with lots of unrest managed to um, I think stop one of them he still has one in Adrianople and one in Anatolia the Spanish player was very successful he really has a solid empire now here Portugal plus two, Granada plus two, Aragon plus two, Cordoba plus three, Castile plus one. This is a pretty rich and solid empire. And uh, also the, uh, the Irish player, he starts developing this mess that he started with to a nice little empire. We have here plus one, plus one. This is the maximum in this areas. Mercia went from I think minus two to plus one and there is still uh, a little bit to go here this can go up to a plus three Scotland is pretty low still and also not too valuable but he's also a good fighter so he might considering taking Wessex in the near future or maybe Northumbria which only um, needs a single success so maybe he can actually grab uh, the islands here and uh, yeah establish a nice little empire there okay and oh yeah I forgot about that we had here a monastic revival once again that was actually the most interesting thing in the last turns and that means that uh, again cathedrals showed up we have one here in Aragon uh, another one here in Mercia one in Burgundy where it is absolutely necessary 
they help with ruling and that's definitely necessary. Switzerland, it's a little risky because if the other guy makes an attack here, the cathedral might uh, get lost. But uh, then again, if he wants to rule here, that will help. Lombardy. And uh, here we have one in Naples. Okay. We've seen another Viking raid. Uh, Normandy suffered twice here. And I think Castille once and Mercia once. They have a very strong leader with a value of 9. So that was pretty painful here. So the first player now is going to be the German player. He does first taxation. Friesland. Let me see. That's unrest. Franconia and Bavaria. The others are fine. So he gets two, four, six, eight bucks. And he can now try again to fight. The other guy only has three bucks to defend himself. So let's see. We're gonna see an attack here against Lombardy again. And uh, so I have a combat value of three. Minus two is one, but then I can add three, which brings it to a four then. Got to subtract two for the fortress, two for the language, so I'm exactly at zero. It's a hard, I mean, is the other guy willing to throw in some money? I don't think so. I think I want to see what happens here. And it's not a conquest result, the target is reduced, which doesn't matter, and the active base is also reduced. So that means we see unrest in the area. And it's again at minus three. So this is getting harder there. Okay. Going to do a ruling action in Switzerland. That's a plus one. The question is, so we got a two, minus three is minus one. The cathedral brings us a bonus, so that goes up to one then, uh, to zero. So uh, it's not the plus one result, but the unrest goes away at least. And I think I want to try here now another attack. Do I? Tough question. I have two more cards, or three more cards actually. So yeah, I think I want to do it. I'm going to go in with another attack here. I get three bucks back. And I might even consider now spending some money. So, let's see. Minus three, minus three, that cancels out. So I have a three attack value, minus one. So, let's see. This guy has a combat value of two, which is pretty bad. Now if I throw in, let's say four bucks, I would be at three, and I think he wants to defend himself here. So he throws in one buck for the defensive cost, and then, yeah, it's tricky, he has two left. I think that's it, and it's a minus two, so I'm at one then. And look at that, this is not enough. So, uh, 
definitely no actually that was wait a minute here I messed this up somehow yeah these were that was actually the defending players card and this is now the attackers player card and it's a conquest result so that means the, the target is reduced the active base drops down another one but uh, that is impossible but we get an unrest there and now I got two more cards here and I think the first one I want to use for a I wonder you know what I think I want to throw in another card for an attack and Let me, let me count that. So again, I got to spend two bucks to go to a plus to go to a plus one exactly. So and then the other guy he spends all his remaining money for less defense to reduce me to zero. But if it is a conquest result, the court will fail, fall, and that's exactly the case. The court now finally has fallen, and uh, Lombardy becomes now a German area. Wow, okay, that was a battle that went on for decades, but we managed to take finally this area. Of course, it's in a terrible shape here, minus three. Um, uh, wait a minute, there we are. And uh, who knows how long I can... The, the fortress is destroyed, by the way. I'm going to roll if the palace is going to be destroyed and a 4 to 6 that's going to be the case. So the palace is also destroyed. And what about the cathedral on a 4 to 6? Also the cathedral is destroyed, which is a shame. Um, okay, so we control Lombardy. The claim remains there for now. We have an unrest there. Um, So, I got one action left. What do I want to do with that? I think I want to try a pillage result against Verona. And that way, the, uh, the other player would not have the option. If I would be successful, uh, the other player would not have the option to actually um, get enough money to, to fight back here and maybe grab Switzerland or something. And he cannot defend himself, so let's see. And uh, it is indeed a minus one. And I can also roll on the gold table, which is kind of cool. So Verona drops down to plus one. And I can roll on the gold table. That is a six. That's pretty awesome. I think that gives me three bucks indeed. Very cool. So, fantastic. Three bucks for me, less money for him. Well, I mean, he might try to rule and in that way maybe increase it, but still, he has some trouble, that's for sure. So, now in addition to that, he's got to place his court somewhere else now, and I think he goes to Verona has to be the same language zone um, but I'm pretty sure we will now pretty soon see the end of that empire but I mean you never know they, they held on for quite a while here but the fact that they don't get any income and that the Byzantine player 
is no longer willing to help him simply will let him die sooner or later. However, there's a lot of unrest here in Germany and if the player draws uh, some kind of nasty card, it is possible that we see then some serious trouble happening there. Again, some ruling went on here. Pretty solid areas here. Actually, I made a mistake um, pretty often. When an area was reduced due to a failed endeavor, then I placed an unrest there and that is actually not correct. What you're gonna do is you roll on the rebellion table and uh, well depending on the um, the situation in the area the odds might be actually pretty low that there will be an unrest. But okay I mean that was the same disadvantage for everyone I guess it kind of evened out everywhere so from now I'm gonna try to play it right. Bad news for the Irish player, his very good leader died. The 9 combat rating is gone here. But he was lucky, he ended up with a 5 leader, which is still pretty good. And he still has now 2 cards. And he wants to use his, these 2 cards trying to attack Wessex. So he spends 2 bucks. And, uh, well, the odds are not bad. He has a 5 plus two is a seven, plus two is a nine, and then he's got to subtract one. Uh, no, it's actually an unrelated language. So he's at seven, which is uh, pretty good. And yeah, he was successful here. The target will lose another one. And that is just, oops. I'm gonna place another one of these. And this is a partial conquest because there are two population in Wessex. And we're going to try it again, spend the last money we have. And if we take this area, we've conquered Great Britain. Let's see. And uh, no, we didn't. Actually, the base loses one. That was bad luck here. But okay, maybe in the next turn we'll be more successful. So for now, we're just allowed to place a partial marker here, but I guess we have a good chance to take Wessex in the next turn. Okay. Um, I mean, in theory, the uh, the French player could also try to capture Wessex, but is he so interested in a conflict with this guy? Hard to tell. It's a great area. Wessex is a very rich area. I mean, not at the moment, but definitely later. But on the other hand, he already has a ton of great areas here. So I guess uh, he doesn't need that conflict with the English player. So we're at the end of that turn. Honestly, I have no idea how long the video was. I think I played about six hours or something. Uh, but, you know, I mean, there is not too much spectacular stuff happening. This is a very slow game with a very slow pace and lots of ruling actions, just trying to keep the area in a good shape. And... Uh, well, we've seen that um, that constant fighting here in the center, but that took very long because the Byzantine player was permanently giving the Lombardian player money. But now, uh, yeah, it looks pretty bad. And I guess we see in the next uh, five years or so, maybe in the next decade, Verona and Tuscany will fall to the Germans. Okay, 
So I'm gonna load this up now and uh, hope to see you on the next video or on lonesomegamer.com. Bye.